Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Samara's newcomer Sethos has emerged from the desert to show off his fluffy hair and archery skills. This guide will go over his kit and talents, constellations, best artifact and weapon builds, team synergies, and tips to help you better understand his particular skill set. But before we get into it, let me introduce this video's sponsor. Taurus Land is a new cross-platform game that brings you the classic MMORPG experience and fantasy art style. Start off by choosing from a range of 9 different classes including Phantom Necro, Shadow Swordsman, Ranger, Paladin, and more with 1 out of 2 specializations per class. Then use your profession's talent tree to create your character's unique build. Once you're ready for battle, go out and explore the vast world of Taurus Land with lots of landscapes, puzzles, adventures, and stories awaiting you. And of course, rediscover the pure fun of MMO raids working with your team to overcome various epic high-level bosses and dungeons. One much-anticipated fight is the final boss, Blight Dragon, which is sure to give you and your team a challenge. Ooh, okay, that looks so epic, actually. I am the and don't forget, there's cross-platform data sharing between mobile and PC, so you can log in whenever or wherever you are. Tyrus Land is making its global launch on June 21, so click the link in the description to pre-register. Thank you, Tyrus Land, for sponsoring, and now let's get back to the video. Sethos is a 4-star Electro Bow DPS whose kit is focused on maximizing reaction damage with a unique trait of having two different playstyles. So we should understand how his damage works and how to apply both possible playstyles. To start, Sethos' skill deals AoE Electro damage and makes him dash backwards upon casting it. Hitting an opponent generates two Electro Particles, but moreover, if it triggers an Electro-related reaction, Sethos gains an additional flat 12 energy. And his energy is important because it's what enables both his playstyles. First, is his charge shot mechanics. Sethos' charge shot attack has two charging levels, but it's the second level, called the shadow piercing shot, that's most relevant. Upon fully charging, Sethos cannot move until he fires his shadow piercing shot, which deals electro damage in a line in front. Against multiple enemies, it's best to line them up to maximize each shot. Shadow piercing shot's damage scaling is a combination of attack and EM multipliers. However, EM has a bigger impact because not only does EM increase the base damage, but it also amplifies the reaction damage he deals. Sethos's build preference and reaction playstyle is really skewed towards EM, giving it much more value. These charge shots have no internal cooldown, meaning that it can always apply Electro and potentially trigger an Electro-related reaction, notably Aggravate and Hyper Blooms. The default charging time of his level 2 charge shot is quite long, but his Ascension 1 passive can decrease its charging time by 0.285 seconds per point of energy Sethos currently has, with the max being 20 energy, which makes it charge instantaneously. When the shadow piercing shot is fired, it will consume the corresponding energy. This allows you to quickly unload the shadow piercing shots consecutively for a fast-paced charge shot playstyle. His Ascension 4 passive also buffs his shadow piercing shot. Its base damage is increased based on 700% of Sethos' EM stat, but with a trigger limit. The effect gets removed either 5 seconds after a shadow piercing shot hits an opponent or after 4 of them hits opponents, whichever comes first. You can see the timer icon next to him when this is active. It refreshes 15 seconds after the first shadow piercing shot, so you can trigger this in every rotation. Sethos stores up to 60 energy, so at full capacity, that's three shadow piercing shots he can fire in a row. Using his skill to generate energy can also add one more shadow piercing shot, so the four hit limit of his ascension passive naturally corresponds to that. On the other hand, we have his normal attack mechanics. After casting his burst, Sethos enters the Twilight Meditation state for 8 seconds. During this time, his aiming mode is disabled and his normal attacks transform into piercing Dusk Bolt attacks infused with Electro. Similar to his Shadow Piercing shot, their damage is also increased based on Sethos' EM stat. Note that these Dusk Bolts are considered as charged attack damage, so related charged attack bonuses and buffs will affect them. These also have a piercing effect, so if you line up the enemies properly, you can hit multiple targets. It's simply about firing away and triggering reactions to maximize the damage in this 8 second window. The animation of the third hit is pretty slow, so you can cancel it to speed up his attacks and trigger more reactions overall. One is by walk cancelling. You hold a directional input and let him walk for a split second between his second and third attack, which will cause him to reset the normal attack combo. The biggest benefit is that it doesn't require any stamina. Dash cancelling helps with dodging and repositioning but costs stamina, and repeating it without caution can be bad for stamina 
data management. Find a balance that works best and adapt to the scenario as needed. If you can't be bothered, then just spam all three attack animations anyway. With this, Sethus essentially has two playstyles. One is using his charged shots and consuming energy, and the other is gathering energy to cast his burst and buff his normal attacks. When doing his team rotations and setups, you can lean heavily towards one playstyle and plan your rotation around it or switch between them to suit the scenario if possible. However, they don't necessarily have to be mutually exclusive. You can technically combine both during his on-field window at the expense of heavier energy consumption. To demonstrate, you can first enter his burst state, fire his normal attacks and use his skill when ready, and catch particles which will replenish his energy. After this burst state ends, you can consume energy to fire some charged shots. It's one way to combine both playstyles and give him more on-field presence. But if you do this, be very mindful of his energy management and that he can still reliably cast his burst when needed in your rotations. When leveling his talents, if you use both normal attacks and charge shots, then level up both his burst and normal attack talents, or just prioritize one if you have a preference. His skill is low priority, and leveling it up doesn't change the energy it generates anyway. For his ascension materials, Sethos uses Trishorite, Suani Boss Mats, and Aramite Cloths. For his talents, he uses the Praxis series, more Aramite Cloths, and the Daka's Bell material from the Scaramouche Boss. Now let's take a look at his constellations. Sethos at C0 already has a cohesive kit. His cons are mainly about increasing his damage and don't offer anything particularly game-changing. C1 gives his shadow piercing shots an extra 15% crit rate. It's a nice but specific charge shot bonus with no relevance to his normal attacks. For C2, if you do any of the following, Sethos gets 15% electro damage bonus that can stack up to two times. Drain his energy with an aimed charged attack, regain his energy by triggering a skill reaction or use his burst. He'll effortlessly trigger the bonuses in any playstyle, so that's an easy 30% electro damage bonus buff. C3 increases his normal attack talent by 3. With C4, if his shadow piercing or dusk bolt shots hit two enemies, your party gains ADEM for 10 seconds. That's a nice EM team buff, especially in danger teams, but clearly has no use in pure single target fights. C5 increases the burst talent level by 3, and C6 gives him a full energy refund from doing a shadow piercing shot that can trigger every 15 seconds. This does have an impact to his gameplay as that lets you add free charge attacks in his rotations, which results in more damage potential or easier energy management. Next, let's go over Sethos' build, starting with stats which are very straightforward. Elemental Mastery for his Sands, Electro Damage for his Goblet, but EM can also be a viable alternative, and Crit Rate or Damage for his Circlet, whatever balances your crit ratio best. For substats, get ER as needed, Crit, and EM. Attack rolls have low value, and you'll always want EM over attack rolls. You can set your EM goal at about 400 to 700, including buffs. This is quite achievable with Sethos' EM Ascension stat, an EM set bonus, and EM Sands, some EM substats, plus external sources like teammates or his C4. For his ER targets on his burst playstyle, if you're playing him with an Electro teammate, you barely need to build any ER since using his skill twice in a rotation already grants him a lot of energy. As a solo Electro, he will want some ER, but this can be alleviated by team equipment and or battery teammates. Moving on to his artifact sets. Wanderer's Troop gives perfect EM and charge attack bonuses and can be passively farmed from bosses. Longtime players and those who built similar charge attack units before likely have a really good set already. Gilded Dreams is a very good alternative thanks to its EM bonuses and is efficient if you also want to farm deep wood pieces. Thundering Fury gives electro damage and electro reaction bonuses and more importantly has a skill cooldown reduction effect. With this, Sethos can more frequently recast his skill that can lead to better energy management if you're especially using him in energy-heavy rotations. Retracing Bolide gives a charge attack bonus while the user is protected by a shield, plus a shield strength bonus to help the shield last longer. It can be a good option if you plan on playing Sethos with a shielder, but it's also quite a niche set, so I don't recommend farming it if you don't already have it. Thunder Soother and Desert Pavilion are also viable, but aren't specifically worth farming just for him, and there's Marachose Hunter if you play him with Farina. You can also opt for two-piece combos of these sets and just focus on getting the best quality pieces. Now for his weapon recommendations, and thankfully, his choices are very simple with a very strong yet accessible option. That's the Slingshot, a 3-star option that's just generally better than other 4-stars and even competitive with most 5-stars. Despite being a 3-star weapon, it has a big crit rate substat and also a huge 60% damage bonus buff as long as the user's attacks hit the enemy within 0.3 seconds after firing. The low base attack is not an issue since Sethos values E 
DM more anyway. Normal combat range will easily maintain the passive bonus. It only gets disabled if you're doing some really long distance stuff since the arrow passes the 0.3 second mark. At full potential, it's just really significantly better over other free-to-play and four-star weapons such as the new event weapon Cloudforged or the older event weapon Ibis Piercer. It even pulls ahead of the Battle Pass bow. Speaking of, if you have the Zion of the Blazing Sun from buying Battle Passes, it's a potential alternative to Slingshot, though still lower in performance even at R5. For 5 stars, the Hunter's Path is his best in slot. It has the perfect synergy by buffing the user's charge attack damage based on their EM stat, giving it an advantage over other 5 stars in Slingshot. Aqua Simulacra and the First Great Magic are good 5 star stat sticks too thanks to their high crit damage and damage bonuses, though even Slingshot is still competitive against them. Other 5 star crit weapons can still be stat sticks, but those that buff attack like Polar Star or normal attack damage for Thundering Pulse have very reduced potential since such stats aren't as useful to his kit. Now let's move on to his team synergies. One gameplay concern I had was how squishy and prone to interruption he can be. His base defense and HP are actually quite low, and ranged units are also more prone to getting staggered than melee units. It can be very annoying whether you're using charged shots or spamming his normals. The simple solution is to have a shielder, otherwise it can just do a lot of dash cancels to dodge at the expense of stamina or be wary of his position. For Aggravate, you'll need an off-field Dendro unit. Nahida is, as usual, the premium Dendro support for a strong Dendro application and an on-field EM buff to maximize Sethos' damage. Baiju offers a great mix of healing, pseudo shielding to mitigate interruptions, and Dendro reaction buffs to Sethos. Four-star alternatives like Kirara and Yao Yao for dedicated shielding and healing respectively are always there if you want sustained utilities to free options like Dendro Traveler and Kole. Having another Electro DPS can maximize Aggravate triggers and help battery Sethos. Michelle is excellent for DPS and energy, and Sethos effectively drives her Aggravate procs. Other DPSs like Yaimiko with convenient and good off-field damage or Beidou for AoE damage and increased interruption resistance are great substitutes, or C6 Kujasara if you want to buff Sethos. An Animo equipped to the VV set can shred the enemy's Electro resistance and offer certain buffs, and those with Animo Vortexes can help crowd control enemies which can help in lining them up for his shots. Sethos can also do quick swap rotations with his short on-field times, so pairing him up with other quick swap friendly Dendro or Electro DPSs like Tignari can let you split their on-field time for a dual DPS setup. If you really want to prevent interruptions and aren't using previously mentioned defensive units yet, place a shielder in the flex slot just so you can have as much comfort as possible. Then if you add slow hydro application that still preserves the quicken aura most of the time while generating dendro cores simultaneously, that makes the team a mix of quicken and hyperbloom damage or quick bloom. And since Sethos naturally builds a lot of EM which benefits both his aggravates and hyperblooms, his build path for this is very streamlined. The biggest aspect to be mindful of is his electro applications AoE properties and being more conscious when triggering those hyperblooms. His skill cast has a good AoE which easily triggers cores. His normal attack hits have a narrow field of applying dendro so you'll have to align their trajectory with the cores to trigger. And his charge attack has a wider hitbox in its line of fire so you can use this to catch more spread out cores. For hydro application, Farina is a really good and convenient hydro option since her pets just auto attack and her damage buff means more damage for Sethos. However, combining her HP drain with Sethos' squishiness is a higher risk, so make sure you can effectively sustain him. Yelan is a good alternative as Sethos drives her burst attacks and benefits from her ramping damage bonus buff. Any dendro cores left after his burst state has ended can be cleaned up by his charge shots. If you add a lot of hydro application, then that will lessen the quick enough time and skew reactions more towards generating dendro cores and triggering hyperblooms, which lessens Sethos' aggravates. Sethos is really well tailored for dendro teams and I highly recommend playing those templates. In the other Electro-based team templates, Overload and Taser, Sethos' kit won't suit them as well. These are teams that still rely heavily on the raw damage dealt rather than reactions, and don't utilize his EM and reaction-focused kit as effectively as Dendro teams can. But if you're not that concerned about his strongest teams, you can certainly play him in such teams anyway. And that's it for this Sethos guide. Let me know in the comments what you think of him so far. And if this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care.